Hello. Today we are going to talk about the map applicative. I think the map applicative is quite an interesting one and I'm going to show you an interesting use case for it. We have a bunch of classes. First of all, we have the product ID, which is just a wrapper over a string. And then we have two classes that represent some data stored, for example, in a database. So we have a product that has an ID of type product ID, and it also has a name and it could potentially have some more data inside it. And we have inventory, uh, which has a reference to a product by its ID, as well as the amount of inventory that we have for a product. So these two case classes could be directly mapped to rows in, for example, an SQL database. Uh, so let's imagine we have one. And let's also imagine we have two functions already implemented that fetch the list of products and fetch the list of inventory entries uh, that we have in our database. Uh, so uh, these will output some hard-coded information. We have three products uh, with each one has a different ID. And also we have uh, four inventory entries, uh, one for the first product, two for the second product, which is a perfectly valid situation. We'll just sum these up. Uh, later, and one for a product that doesn't exist in the list. Uh, so, uh, what we want to do is find, uh, basically call these two functions, get the products and get the inventory, and uh, sort of zip these two lists together in a way that will map each product to the amount of, of in its inventory. So first of all, I need to call these two uh, to get the lists. So I'll use the for comprehension for that. And now I can uh, I can group these by the product ID. So first I'll map I'll group the the products, and I'm going to do it right here. And I'm also going to group the, uh, the inventory by the product ID as well. So I know for a fact that products will only contain one, uh, one entry per ID. So I can easily just take the first element from the list in that map. So this is going to be a map uh, with, uh, with, uh, from product ID to an non-empty list of product. And I can just get the products, uh, but I'm going to use the map that only uh, works on the values, not the keys, which is fmap from cats. So I'll just get the head because I know that there will be just one. And the type of non-empty list also guarantees that there's at least one. So at least I'm not going to hit an empty list. So products is now uh, a sorted map of product ID and product, which is what we wanted. And inventory is still a, uh, a sorted map of product ID and an empty list of inventory. But what I really want from the inventory is the sum of the amounts. So I'm going to uh, work on this, this group map by uh, mapping the values. This time I will reduce them uh, by mapping them to the amount and then that will be summed. So now I'll have a sorted map of product ID and int. And normally how you would approach the rest of this uh, basically, what we need is uh, something of this shape, uh, products with inventory, which will be a sorted map of product ID to product and uh, int, which will be the amount. And normally, what you can do is uh, you can do products map. So we'll have a product ID and product. Then we would uh, basically get the inventory of this particular product. And uh, yeah, we would uh, return that with the key, the same key, because we need a product ID. And we will also have the product in the first field of the tuple in the value. So this is so far uh, a sorted map of product ID uh, to product and option of int. 
so we need just an int. So in the case we don't find an inventory for a, for a product, we want to just uh, skip this product from the result. So I will do collect, and if we have a key and a product and a, an inventory amount, we will return k, p, and i. Uh, yeah, so this should be of the correct type, and it is. So now let's uh, let's return that, and let's give this whole for comprehension a name. So that'll be uh, result. So I'm going to map uh, to flat map this result. Uh, having this map, I will. Uh, convert the map to a list, but first I'll map the values to strings, and I will now traverse that list with uh, a with string line. So I'll just output each line in it. And that should work. Uh, yeah, I need a show instance. So I'm actually going to convert the whole uh, tuple in the list to a string. Uh, so we should see something that has two keys. So we have the first product and the second product. So we only got two because uh, this product, the third product, didn't have any inventory. And this inventory didn't belong to any product. If we had a product with the ID 4, uh, P4, we would see it in the result. And uh, also if we had a, any inventory for a product with this ID product 3, we would also see it there. But we didn't. So uh, this is pretty nice, but this looks quite irrelevant. Like we do a bunch of transformations on this map just to to sort of zip these two maps. And one thing that we could do instead is we could actually take these two maps and tuple them together. And it turns out that this is all we needed to do. I can just inline this, return this from my full comprehension, and as you'll see, that will give me the same exact result. We have just two values, uh, just two rows, with the keys that appeared in both maps. So this is how the map applicative works, because tuple will use underneath the applicative instance of sort the map for any key, and how it works, it'll basically just zip these two maps and get only values at the keys which appear in both maps. And of course the key needs to be of the same type in both maps. So now we can give this result a type just to make it clear what it is. It's going to be a sort of map of product. And it's actually going to be a map of product ID to product and end. And yeah, let's just run it once again. And yes, we, we got the same result as before, so everything works. Uh, this is what we wanted. So you saw how the map applicative works. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. So I encourage you to look for other applicatives and other use cases of the map applicative, maybe. Uh, other instances of the map type are also very interesting. In the previous video, I talked about the semi-group of map. Uh, so take a look at that if you're interested. Uh, let me know what you think about this video. Uh, don't forget to rate it. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. So uh, thank you very much, and I hope to record more for you in the future.